Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we are going to be recreating Zendaya's gold and fuchsia dress by Ralph and Russo. It walked the runway. It was iconic. Everyone wanted to see it. So let's get to it. I found this amazing fuchsia satin and this gold satin as well. I couldn't find the exact yellow beaded fabric of the bodice, but I found this gold beaded fabric. It's all done by hand. It's from India and it looks amazing in the sun. So I figured that could be a really nice alternative. I just made sure that I chose a nice like deep mustard color rather than a bright canary yellow satin to complement the gold sequins. I'm now going to start laying the style lines on the mannequin. This shows me where I want the seams to be in the bodice. I'm using really thin strips of a blue painter's tape that I cut to show where I want to place the seams. It's really important that you think about where your seams are going to go on a dress like this because the real outcome of it is based on where the seams are placed. This style of pattern making is called draping. It's always been the easiest way for me to understand how the fabric is going to lay. I think mainly because I can get a visual of how the fabric is laying. I can see the seams on the actual body form. So yeah, I've always found this to be the easiest way for me to personally grasp what I'm doing. This dress has a lot of seams on the left side of the body. I think it really gives that kind of corset vibe without being an actual corset. The middle section of this dress is going to be where the gold sequins go, so it's kind of like this bodice, and it kind of gives you a little bit of a reveal with the drape that hangs over it. Now that I've placed all my seams, I can then use my fabric to start draping the actual pattern pieces. I use a fabric called cotton muslin to start draping over the pattern. I like it because it's light in color, I can see the seams through it, and it really allows me to contour to the body. When draping, I hang the fabric from the mannequin on the bias, so it gives me a little bit of stretch so I can really get in there and make sure that I get the pattern pieces correct to the body shape. Then I go over and I trace where my seam allowances will go, and I also label it so that I don't forget where the pattern piece went. After I finish a pattern piece, I then make my way around the dress form, just contouring each piece to the body form and really getting the shape that I lined out correct on the muslin. Don't worry about getting them exact because we will go through and perfect those pattern pieces afterward. Now that I've drafted all the pattern pieces that are tight fit to the body, I can then work on the sash that hangs in front. This is definitely a tricky piece because I really want to get the drape correct because I think it really makes the garment and gives an added softness to the piece. When I cut this pattern piece, it's really important that I do cut this on the bias, which means like diagonal of the grain line, because it's going to give a much needed drape to the satin. It's going to feel a lot more effortless and it's really going to give some added movement. Now that I've drafted all the pattern pieces for the bodice of this gown, I can then work on perfecting the pattern pieces, which means going through, making sure the shapes are exactly what I want and the measurements that I think they should be, and then I can add my seam allowance afterwards. This is my go-to tool. I know that there are a lot of different French rulers out there, but this ruler came from Joanne Fabrics. It's tried and true. I love that I can see the measurements on it, and it's also super cheap, but it also does the job, which is nice. So yeah. I'm just going to make my way through all these pattern pieces and really correct them so that I can make sure that the seams are going to line up. After you've made a couple garments, you kind of have an eye for what's going to work and what's not. Here you can see my method of adding the seam allowance. I just kind of follow around my ruler and trace out that half an inch mark. I prefer half an inch seam allowance because I think it really gives you a lot of wiggle room if you do have to take a garment in or let a garment out. Now that we've added all of our seam allowance, we can then cut those patterns out and get ready to start placing them on our fabric. Placement is totally key because you want to make sure that you have enough fabric to make the entire gown. When cutting satin, I think it's really important to go through and to use a pattern weight. I use stones, you can really use anything, but I think that it's really nice to have something like this rather than a pin, because sometimes a straight pin can cause a snag in the fabric, it can also leave pin holes in specific fabrics. I've made sure that all my pattern pieces are on the same grain, meaning that if I want stretch to go one way in the garment around the waist, it all goes the same direction rather than having them go multiple directions. This also helps control the sheen of a fabric so that you don't have two different shines happening. I use a rotary blade to cut out a lot of these lightweight silks. I think it gives you more control, a really beautiful clean edge. They also do make versions of this that are pinking shears that causes a little bit less fraying. I just don't happen to have one on hand. 
Now it's time to cut the sequin fabric. I know there are a lot of different ways to do this. Some people even add extra seam allowance so that they can pick the sequins off of the fabric where they're going to cut and sew and then restitch them on. I'm choosing to do it a little bit of a simpler way just to show you that there are multiple ways to do this. It does make it a little harder sometimes and also make sure you have a pair of really sharp scissors to do this. Also when sewing sequins, make sure that you have multiple needles on hand because you are bound to break one and never serge sequins. Serge is also a term for overlocking the fabric but you will definitely break your needles if you do it and I don't suggest doing it. Because the sequin portion of this bodice is really a focal point of the gown, I want to make sure that it can stand up on its own since it's a heavy fabric. So I'm using a fusible interfacing on the back of it. It's really stiff, it gives a nice texture to it, and also once it's sewn in, it's going to help give the garment some structure. I'll also be adding it to the lining of the bodice so that the whole thing can kind of give it some support. It's finally time to start stitching the bodice together. I'm starting with the purple portions and I'm going to sew them at my half an inch mark. I'm also carefully going to remove all of my straight pins as I go, mainly because people lose their minds if I don't, but also it is better for your needles if you don't want to break them. A massive step in designing a garment is to think about the construction and how it helps each other. Every pattern piece supports another pattern piece, so as you're stitching together, really consider which pieces are going to need to be sewn together before they can help out the other pieces. If you follow my TikTok, you know how important it is to press your seams. It's the most important thing when it comes to a garment I feel in making it look professional. I use a tool called an ironing ham, which is like a really densely stuffed stuffed animal basically. And it allows you to really get into grooves sometime and press seams open that are hard to get to. Also, if any of your seams have a slight curve to them, it's nice to sometimes go in and clip them a little bit to allow them to press open flat and beautifully. Some fabrics iron open better than others. This one did okay. I'm not too mad at it. I think it'll be much better once it's on a garment and has counter tension everywhere where it's designed to. I'm also going to give a quick steam to these sequins. My iron's on a lower setting, but I've got a lot of steam. I think it's going to help push that fabric flat and beautiful, but it's also not going to melt the sequins, which can happen. So definitely check your iron temperature before you press anything. I can now start working on the sash that's going to hang in front of the garment. It is cut on the bias, which makes it a little harder to sew sometimes since it's such a slippery fabric, but I've designed these little darts that are going to help contour it to the body. I also have to do this step first before I can attach the gold sequins to the rest of the bodice, because this is also attached in that seam. I'm now going to begin sewing the gold bodice into the rest of the purple bodice. I do have that sash sewn in the middle of this because it's got that nice curve to the whole structure of the garment, and that's where it's really going to help the sash lay perfectly. Now that the more intricate seams of the bodice are sewn together, I can work on attaching the rest of the pieces that will construct the rest of the bodice. Now that the bodice is constructed, I can then start pressing everything open flat. This is the most gratifying part of the process. I don't know what it is about seeing something lay flat and beautiful, but it really gets me. I'm also going to sew the lining together, which is basically the same exact pattern pieces as the outside of the garment, minus the sash, and I'm going to sew them exactly how I sewed the rest of the bodice. Now the satin will face towards the body so everything feels soft on the inside of the garment as well. Lining your garment is so important. My grandmother used to always tell me that your garment better look as beautiful on the inside as it does on the outside, and that's just a little tidbit of information that stuck with me as I've grown. Once I've sewn the lining to the bodice, I'm then going to press the top of it. This is also a part of the process where you really get to see the dress starting to come together. You spend so much of this time just wondering and hoping it's going to look right, and then all of a sudden it kind of takes shape. So this is one of those little victories that I look forward to in the process. The fuchsia part of the skirt is super tricky in a way because these pleats have to contour to the body and they also angle away from the slit because it's really going to make way for that mustard little peekaboo spot to come through. So it's taken me a little while to really get on this mannequin and kind of pick out where I want all of these to go. I am choosing to do this without a pattern. I think it gives you a little bit more freedom. I know it's risky. Maybe it's the project runway in me, but I chose to just go for it. Now that I got the top to a place where I'm happy with it, I'm then going to go through at the bottom and I'm just going to kind of mark with pins where I want the dress to lay so that I can then use the ruler afterward to go through and then I can cut it off. After marking with pins where I wanted the train to lay, I went through and I traced over it with a light pencil mark and then corrected it with my ruler, but I forgot to film that process, but I did do it and now I'm just going to go away and trim the excess. 
Now that I got the fuchsia part of the skirt to a place where I'm happy with it, I started to draft out the pattern for the mustard peekaboo piece. I just hung a piece of muslin on the mannequin and now I'm going through and kind of tracing out where I'd like for it to go, just loosely, and then afterwards I will take my ruler and correct that pattern piece, and then I can take it off the mannequin and then cut out the mustard pieces. The next step is to cut out the mustard fabric. I am going to cut two pieces of this because I want to have a super clean edge, so I'm going to sew them together, flip that inside out, and then press it flat. After sewing my mustard pieces and attaching them to the top part of the skirt and the bodice, I can then have one solid piece that's going to be the dress, and the next step will be to add the zipper. Now I have an industrial sewing machine and I use a zipper foot specifically designed for it. I'm also using a black zipper currently because I don't have a purple one on hand and I had to get this video out pretty fast, but I did end up replacing the zipper with a purple one after the video. Now that the gown is sewn together, I can then go ahead and hem the bottom of the fuchsia fabric which is not the easiest thing to do, but I do like a really tight rolled hem on the satins like this. I know a lot of people have different preferences. This is the one that works for me. The last step will be to add these black satin straps to the dress. They are at the waist and at the shoulder of the dress. The Ralph and Russo gown had a bow at the waist, so I'm kind of recreating that here and just hand sewing that together to create the shape. I always think it's kind of fun to get into the mind of another designer when you're creating something. I think it really helps flex creative muscles and like help you gain new techniques and practice old ones. And here's what my finished product looks like. I have to say I'm so excited about the way it turned out. I really loved the process of making this gown. I feel like I learned a lot. I got to practice some new and old skills and I hope you guys love watching it come together too. Let me know what you think in the comment section.